I've got a fundamental question for you. Have you ever dreamed of being a rock star? I know I have. As a matter of fact, I took a week, a solid week of guitar lessons, and I, I believe that instructor said that I might want to try something else. <laughs> but we all had dreams of being a rock star. And I've got an unbelievable entrepreneur who is a rock star in marketing, but he starts started in the rock star business. And uh, I'm gonna let him tell you his story, but there are some amazing lessons to be learned. Uh, I just had the opportunity to meet him at a mastermind group, Joe Polish's Genius Network uh, Mastermind, and met him last week, and we immediately uh, said, hey, I gotta share your message, because I know every one of the entrepreneurs I've had the privilege to work with, they all wanna be a rock star. I know you do too, maybe not, with the band, maybe not with the guitar, but in your business, because we want to make a difference. That den in the universe and AES Nation is all about accelerating your success even more. I'm John Bowen. Stay tuned. You do not want to miss this. Dig deep. Think bold. Drive hard. Watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com. Craig does well. I mean, I am so excited hanging out with you. Uh, it was so fun. Uh, we, you were both in uh, uh, G, uh, the Genius Network uh, Mastermind Group uh, last week and uh, had a lot of fun together. We're sitting close to each other. And then at the same time, you shared in a 10x talk a whole bunch of ideas to a little over 60 of some of the most successful entrepreneurs. And I looked around the room and everybody was taking all kinds of notes, Craig. So I, I go, I got to share you with our audience. Well, great to be here, John. And I want to be shared with your audience. And I want you to inspire and, and really share some of the insights you did with the group and the time that we have. But the, the key thing, though, that I, I think you know, everybody wants to know where we're all coming from, because we're a product of our environment. You know, I've got behind me all these books. You got behind you all these guitars. Uh, tell us a little bit about the rock star in you. So I uh, started basically as a, an actor. I wanted to be an actor in college and I, I had a marketing degree, but my focus was on acting because I thought I wanted to be a, uh, an actor, a star, you know, in Hollywood. So anyway, so I did that for a little while. I got out of college and I got a job working in a theater in Long Island, New York, because I wanted to be an actor. So I worked backstage at a theater. And to make a really long story short, Air Supply came in and did two shows. They did Friday night and Saturday night. Friday night, I worked the show. I'm the runner. I'm the lowest man on the totem pole. I'm the guy that gets the drinks, the towels. But I did it very, very well, you know? And then the second night, I wasn't scheduled to work, but my mom wanted to go see Air Supply. So I took her to the concert, and during intermission, I went backstage, introduced my mom to the band because she wanted to meet the band. Good son. Very yeah. few sons would take their moms to a rock concert. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I lived that day over and over. I, what was I thinking? Just out of college, I'm going to a concert with my mommy. It was horrible. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway I do it because that's the kind of guy I am. And I go backstage, and the band is there, and I introduce my mom to the band. I don't really even know the band. I just met them last night. And this big six foot five, 300 pound security guard comes up to me and he says, you were the guy that was working here last night, right? And I'm like, yeah, Mr. Very Large Man. And he goes, how much do you make a week here? And I'm thinking it's none of your business, but he's really big, I should answer the question. So I said about $150 a week. And he says to me, how would you like to quadruple that? And I'm thinking to myself, what does this man want me to do to, for $600 a week? But I'm in, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever you want because I'm out of college. I need the money. And he said, the band saw you working last night. They loved your positive attitude and your energy. And they want to know if you want to go on the road. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. To make a long story short, again, they sent a limo to my house the next morning. And I took a Learjet to Wallingford, Connecticut and toured with gun, uh, air supply for about six years. It was... Uh, Quite amazing. And then through Air Supply, I made some connections and the security guard from Air Supply became the manager of Guns N' Roses. And that's how I get the Guns N' Roses gig. He calls me up one day, you ready to go back on the road? And I'm like, uh, what do I have to do? He basically said, you have to take care of Axl Rose. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, I'm in. You better pay me a lot of money, though, because, uh, you know, that's a hard job, I think. So I toured with them for three and a half years. And I did all this rock star stuff. I was in the music industry for a long time. But 
I always had this marketing background. I knew I was going to use it someday. And so I learned a lot of things on the road touring with these bands. How do you get 80,000 people to come to a concert? How do you get fans to love what you do? And so I took that information and I now I'm a speaker and I teach regular people like you and I, John, how to become a rock star in their business, how to become the best in their business, how to become known as an expert and celebrity in your field so people want to do business with you. It's, it's uh, you know, we all go down different paths along the way to get here, but I mean, there's so much value in, you know, when we think of uh, really the rock bands and particularly the live shows, I mean, because the music industry has changed so much now that the importance of, rock, you know, those live shows that, you know, there there is every entrepreneur is thinking, how could I get those 80,000 people yeah. to show up for me? And, and you know, th there's just so, I mean, the value of live events uh, is just in everything we do, but it's also, you know, just, you know, so much of marketing is starting a conversation and the, the, the rock star mentality of, you know, entering kind of in, you know, that voice that's going on in the mind right now is uh, powerful. And those are two of the, the most impressive marketing groups out there, your bands. Yeah. But you know, tell me, I mean, you know, what were some of the challenges that, you know, as you made the transition you know, you're, you know, big challenges with a rock band. And now, you know, you're out there, you're helping, you know, fellow entrepreneurs really raise the bar and then some. You know, the biggest challenge for me personally was now I was now the front man. You know, when I was with Guns N' Roses and Air Supply, I was the assistant. I took care of them backstage, but I was watching and learning and modeling. How, how does Axl Rose get on stage He's not even that big of a guy. He's not even, but he commands an audience. And how does he reach that person in the last row? And same thing with Russell Hitchcock, the lead singer. And there were techniques that they kind of used that, you know, Axel had to get himself in a frenzy before he went on stage. He could not be like normal guy. Hey, I'm going to go do a show now. See you guys. I'll be on stage for two hours and I'll be off. We had to work up a frenzy just to get him to have that energy that he goes on stage. So one of the things I do at my um, events and whenever I do guest speaking is I throw t-shirts out into the audience and loud, loud music. There's no way, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm very introverted and no one will believe me, but no one, no one believes that. But I am and I have very low self-esteem and no one believes that either. But I do and I get nervous before I go on stage, but I'm in my mind I'm playing a character that goes back to the acting. So I have to go on stage with something completely different than any other speaker goes on stage. Most people just walk up to the podium or walk on stage and start doing their talk. I play loud music and I'm throwing t-shirts out in the audience so it's impossible for people to not like me because I just gave them a gift. I just threw out like a hundred t-shirts. Yeah. So everyone likes me so I feel more comfortable. So my low self-esteem and my, my in, in, insecurities are now taken off the table because they're in my court now and I've got them wrapped around my finger. And now I, I share some fun stories and then I go into teaching. Then I'm able to now teach. So the difficulties and the challenges I had were becoming this character on stage because I'm not that guy, even though a lot of people think There's I am. There's a lot in what you just went over, Craig, that I want to make sure all, you know, we all get. And you know, the, the one key thing is, I. I'm convinced all of us as entrepreneurs are insecure. I mean, that's just that. And most, um, I don't think I'm totally in, introvert, but I'm definitely not an extrovert. And, and, you know, most of us fall somewhere in that continuum. And you're, uh, you know, you, it's very easy to be uncomfortable whether it's on camera, whether it's on stage, or whether it's in front of your troops or whatever you're doing. And it's, you know, that, you know, really seeing how to create that energy is so valuable. And, you know, it may not be, you know, some of our venues, uh, I, I, you know, I do the very large mastermind with financial advisor. I can't see myself shooting out uh, T-shirts, uh, the rock music there. But I, I, I've had the opportunity to work in sports and entertainment as well. And uh, for a couple of years at a very high level. And I mean, I, I was at a couple of the guys I'd be on stage with, they're back there doing wind sprints. And so I'm kind of like, okay, <laughs> you, know, you know, is it that important to get the energy? And you know, Craig, what I found is it is actually. It is so important. It is the key 
to a successful speaker is the ones that, you know, there's so many speakers I see go up on stage and they walk up there and they shake the hand or hug the person that just introduced them. And then they just start talking. And, and some of them get away with it because like a Les Brown, he doesn't need to show throw T-shirts or anything because he's yeah. so, so amazing. Brian Tracy, same thing. But I don't know. You, the wind sprints, I, that's what I do. I, yeah. I'm, I'm back there getting energy up. Now, with Axel Rose, we did other things that I won't go into detail to get the energy up to get him backstage, uh, backstage to get him on stage. It was nothing weird, but it was different. But that's what I do. I run around and I got to get my heart pumping. And when I get up on stage, I'm throwing the T-shirts out. I'm running from side to side and I'm 53 years old right now. You know, that takes a lot. But it gets my heart pumping and it gets the energy. And I think that's that's how you reach the people in the back of the room. You know, just to get that energy up. And that's how I got the job with Air Supply. I always do my best just in case someone's watching. You never know who is watching you. Yeah, you just assume somebody's always watching. I mean, that's just, you, you just have to do that. Well, let's yeah. go to some of the lessons learned, Craig, along the way. And, you know, one of the things that you and I've talked about, and we talked about when we were hanging out with uh, Joe, is this whole concept of, you know, more and more, more many of us are building uh, businesses uh, that, you know, we, we are you know, kind of like the entertainment industry, much like you're, you know, when you're, you're putting together a company or an event or, you know, business. I have multiple businesses, but in fact, I'll just uh, turn on, I have a camera over my shoulder for another filming. I'm just going to show it. And it's, I'm at Global Headquarters, my pool house. I have three businesses. I've got a whole bunch of people working with me and everything. And they're all project based. And, you know, in today's world, we, we, we're kind of isolated, so many of us. And, you know, how, how do you deal with that? You know, what do you recommend for your fellow entrepreneurs? You know, that's a great, great question because that's what we do as entrepreneurs. We're our own bosses. We're always by ourselves. We, and we have to inspire ourselves all the time to want to get up in the morning and do some work today when the pool is right over there and the golf clubs are right over there and ESPN is right here. And it's hard to get into that mode. So I always share with people, you must, as an entrepreneur, join a mastermind. So that's where I met John, was at Joe Polish's mastermind. It's an amazing group of people. We had 67, I think, the last time. Every time I go to a mastermind or every time I speak at an event or every time I attend an event or any time I go to my mastermind group, I get inspired to want to go home and work harder to do something. So I need that, that push and, 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 and the like-minded people in the room to motivate me. I'm like, oh my God, John's doing that and Dean's doing that and Joe's doing it. Why am I not doing this? Why, how, how can I do this better? Why, why am I not doing these things that these guys are doing and that's why they're successful? And it just shows me what other people are doing every week. Every week I speak either, I either speak somewhere or I'm at a mastermind every Friday or Saturday or Sunday. And it, and it hurts when my kids want to go golfing and stuff like that. That part hurts. But I speak a lot and I'm out there a lot. And that's a key. You have to get out there. So many of us want to do the internet. We want to all focus on the internet, and that's great. But if you're not seen by people out there, they're going to forget you tomorrow because enough of us are actually being seen at places. That's key. You got to join them. I think it's such a big part of it, Craig. I've, I, the difference it's made in my life has been huge. And uh, I really, I've always been in groups and so on, but I got into formal mastermind groups. Uh, early in the 90s when I was building an investment firm and you know it helped me I was in for four years and great group of CEOs and was able to sell that business and another business for a lot of money and lessons learned and and then uh, you know the, I really start joining again in 2008 2009 with the financial downturn and I, you know you could talk with your employees or your contractors or yeah, but you really need your fellow CEOs uh, who, I mean, at least I did. And when I joined, I'm now in three mastermind groups, not counting the one I run. And it's, and I've got 220 in mine and, and I just, I love it because I, I get so many ideas there. But in the group, you know, when we're in these groups, I mean, not only do we meet people, uh, you know, opportunity, you and I to get together, but and here are lessons, people are sharing their best ideas, but the side conversations are just so invaluable. 
and, and it inspires you, but it also gives you a track to run on because somebody, somebody there is very likely, you know, walk the path before you. And, and that's, that's powerful. But, you know, one of the challenges out of all this, and I, Craig, I, you know, boy, I mean, you know, with all the stimulation you get, you know, from being a rock star, whether in music or in business, is all these opportunities show up. And how, how, do, you, how do you stay focused? Uh, because <laughs> there's some opportunity to get distracted. I, I, am, I, I am the king, I think, of ADD, HD, QG, whatever it's called. I am the king of that. I learned very early on, but never applied it. You have to focus in business. Uh, I read numerous books. You got to focus. You got to focus on one thing. But I never did it. I, I wanted to be an actor, you know, and, and I was. I wanted to be a musician, and I was good at marketing, and then I could uh, five thousand things that I was doing way back in the day. But I did them all very good. Same thing in sports. I was really good at golf. I was really good at tennis. In fact, I was a ranked tennis player. I was really good in football. I was really good in basketball. Really good in baseball. But I never, if I would have done one sport, I probably wouldn't be talking to you now because I'd probably be on a field somewhere. Well, actually, I'd be retired by now. But I was really, really good. I never focused. And one day, my wife actually was diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer back in 2006. And it was the worst day of our lives, obviously. Um, but it, it stopped us. We were on a treadmill. We were just on that on that uh, that hamster trail thing, you know, whatever that whatever that thing is called. And we just stopped one day because we had to. And that's when my life changed. I, I it was the worst day of our lives. Ended up looking back now was the best day of our lives because we stopped and said, "What are we doing?" I, at the time, I was the manager of a minor league baseball team. I was uh, the general manager. Sorry, general manager. I was, I opened uh, a theater. I had an 81 seat live theater in Santa Clarita, California. I had an advertising agency. My wife had a modeling agency that I was helping her with. We had three young kids, six, three, and four, six, four, and two at the time. Uh, and I was in the hospital four times that year from stress, from that year from stress. And she was diagnosed with cancer and it made us stop. And then I started reading the books again and I closed my advertising agency, went to a seminar on how to become a speaker. You should become a speaker. And it's, it resonated with me on this day because my mind was open and I've stopped everything. And I said, you know what? I am going to be the best speaker that I can be and I'm going to focus on one thing. And that's what I've done. And ever since 2009, I'm a speaker now and I'm a rock star speaker and I teach rock star marketing and that's all I do. And yes, I have a couple of other businesses, but it's still focused on one thing, rock star marketing. And I teach this. So I have 150 people in my mastermind group. Mm -hmm. Every one of them says, well, I want to do this. I'm really good at this. I think I should do this. Everyone says I should do this. And they want to do all these things. And they do all these things very, very kind of good. But they haven't mastered anything. So that's what we focus on is teaching people focus on one thing. Wherever you go, you tell them, this is what I do. And then when you get to know you, you can say, oh, I also do this, this, and this, and this. But you have to focus on one thing, and most people don't. And even if you teach it and you tell them, they still say, I, I still can do it. I can still it's entrepreneurs, where yeah, we believe that we can overcome almost everything. And, yes. and it's you know, one of the reasons that we are entrepreneurs, but it also sets up for failure. And I mean, one of the things that's helped me tremendously, Craig, on this is it's either a hell yes or it's a no. You know, yes, so, I mean, and I, cause I mean, the problem is you have more and more success, there's more opportunity and, and you can get so distracted you can make your life unbelievably complicated. And the most successful entrepreneurs keep it simple and elegant. They're very focused or systemic. And that I forgot who even told me that hell yes or no. Uh, but once I got that, that became my really powerful filter. I just heard it at the mastermind. We were just that. I, I, Joe said it. I don't know who came up with it, but that was big for me too. If it's not hell yes, it's definitely no. And I've learned how to do that. And I'm really good at that now. Uh, I'm very, very, my wife tried to tell me how to do that for years, but I, I didn't get it for a while, but I got it now. I Our wife said, uh, <laughs> I've been married for about uh, th just over 35 years now, and uh, she's been coaching me, and there's many things along the way. She said, you know, you should have just listened earlier, but that's a whole different story. Let's go yeah, into kind of the, the next lesson learned, which, you know, you really, you shared with the group uh, a lot of framing around thinking differently. And I think, you know, this is one of the powers of your background is 
that you didn't come up, even though you have some traditional marketing training and copywriting and all that, you know, the exposure with the bands and uh, being out there, you know, for so many years and then coming back and really taking these lessons, you really help people think differently. And maybe tell us what that means to you. And then, you know, let's go over some of the suggestions where you've seen successful entrepreneurs actually execute on being different. So my disclaimer is right now that I share probably 250 to 300 really, really outside the box things that you can do in your business at my Rockstar Marketing Boot Camps that are designed to actually help you to think differently. So some of the times when I give these, some people, some people that just want to argue, just want to complain, say something like, oh, that's unethical. You can't do that. Oh, you shouldn't do that. I get it. I understand. I don't think any of them are unethical, to tell you the truth. Otherwise, I would not share them. But some of they're so clever and they're so outside the box. It just makes you think, and they're entertaining stories, but it just makes you think, huh, I'm not going to just send a postcard out anymore with my picture on it and say, please hire me to do this. I'm going to do something a little bit different so maybe that someone is talking about me. And that's the idea of these outside the box marketing. So I have 250 of them. I'm going to share three of them. One of them is called part two. I tell people that everyone should blog, right? Everyone, uh, all entrepreneurs should be blogging every single day of what you're doing and, and some tips that you can give in your business. One of the blogs should say something like, if I was blogging, it would say part two dash how to put on a successful seminar. And I would write part two of this blog as if it was part two. So what everyone else does is they read part two of the blog and now they go back and think, Where's part one? Because I can't put on my seminar next week until I get the full story here. So they go back and look at all my blogs and there is no part one. The idea being they become a fan of yours because they read all your other stuff while they're looking for part one of your blog. So write part two of a blog and don't have part one. So you see where I'm, that disclaimer is very important now? Uh, yeah, I, like, I was at the, you know, uh, the meeting where you were presenting it and it was really interesting because they you know, uh, I'd say most, uh, they're, they're all CEOs or almost everybody in the room was CEOs, but they're a little marketing bent. And, uh, you know, just, I mean, I saw everybody write it down. There are a couple of guys go, I don't know. And then, you know, but you can make available part one. I mean, it's got, kind of, you know. It's you, right. Someday yeah. you I mean, if somebody reaches out to you, you're, you write it and send it to them type thing. But, you know, what, so what I like about it, uh, Craig, is, you know, to me, marketing is all about starting a conversation. And, and you know, in today's world, the amount of noise everybody has into, I mean, we just did a campaign that we just got a great result on. And I won't go into kind of some of the lessons, but I mean, it's, it's amazing when you see it work. And, you know, the days of sending out just an email or even a letter and having people respond positively, uh, you've got to have the whole, you know, thoughtful process. And it's not any one thing we're talking about. It's all of this collectively. But, yeah, this, the, you know, having a written blog or, you know, for some of us who aren't as good at typers, you, you can do video, you know, whatever you want to do. But you've got to have a regular communication with your prospective yes. clients and your clients. Okay, yeah. what, what else can we do? Okay, so and here's another one. Um, I, I do this one a lot. And this is the get the conversation started one. I hate cold calling. I, I, I've never cold called in my life. And I come from the rock star background, so I don't think Axl Rose uh, ever cold, cold called someone and said, hey, we have a concert next week, you wanna come and see it. You have to get 80,000 people. So I try to just get the conversation started. So what I do is I send empty envelopes to people that I wanna connect with. So I, I send an empty envelope and it has my, uh, their address on it, and then the return address has my return address, and underneath it is my phone number. Underneath the return address is my phone number. So they get the letter, and it's empty. They open it, and it's empty, and they're so curious that they look, what the heck was in here? They call the number, and they say, hey, Craig Doeswalt, I just received a letter from you, but it was empty. Can you tell me what was in it? And I tell them nothing was in it. I just wanted you to call me. <laughs> and, and that got the conversation started, and 99% of the time, they're like, are you serious? That's really good. What do you do? And I teach rockstar marketing. I teach businesses how to think outside the box. Da, 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 da. 
And so that gets the conversation going, like you just said. If you're an attorney expanding your services, you shouldn't do it. But you know, you know, these are you know, industry specific, but uh, but uh, clearly there's going to be some businesses, particularly marketing ones. I, I think you know, if you're going to be fun, lighthearted, that whole thing, yeah. uh, it, it's just, I mean, really does start the conversation. I know if I, I've never gotten that, Craig. But if I got that, I if I didn't follow up, I'd have one of my assistants follow up. I mean, there's just, you know, sure. yeah, there's no way it wouldn't at least start a beginning conversation. You got to have that That's next right. script thought through that there's going to be value together. OK, I, I actually did this when I tried to get clients for my advertising agency. I, did that. That, I mean, I think that's a, a brilliant one. And, it, it, and uh, well, let's go. What else you got for us? I got one. I, I one more that we'll share because we're uh, I can give a hunt like 200, but I don't want to do that. I want them to come to my boot camp and see these live. All right, so the last one is called campaign, Rockstar Campaign. So I teach people uh, to run for office. So I ran for office in my local community about four and a half years ago, and I was really running for office because I really did want to be involved in the office I was running for. I really wanted to be involved in this. So I ran for office, and then I went to a, a meeting, and I realized, oh my gosh, what did I do? I don't want to do this because first of all, it took a lot of time and I get that. Um, uh, it, they, were, they were talking about things that me, I'm Mr. ADD, I want things done now. I, I Look, here's, here's the problem, here's the solution, let's fix it. In, in these local offices, there's a lot of politics and things, the hoops that you have to jump through that it just wouldn't fit me. But I did. I ran for office and I realized this is this is not what I wanted to do. But what was happening was you get those signs where you could put your name like Craig Doeswalt in the office I was running for. And you could put them on people's lawns and you could put them on street corners and you could put them everywhere. And then you get the media, the local media calling you saying, hey, Craig Doeswalt, I hear you're running for school office. Uh, well, give us some thoughts on why you're running. And I would talk a little bit about running for office, but I would talk a lot about my advertising agency at the time. But, and they would put it in the paper. Craig Doeswell, owner of Green Room Design and Advertising, is running for office. And they would talk about my advertising agency. So it's a great way to get into the media. It's a great way to get your name out there. Like I said, you can put these signs everywhere in town, and it's legal to do. But what happens is, what happened to me was I didn't want to win because I'm thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, I would have to do this for four years, and I don't want to do this. So now I teach people to think differently and consider running for office. And this is going to be the where people go, oh, Craig, stop, stop. Run for office and lose. <laughs> yeah. And you got to lose is the key. Well, no, you gotta you gotta gotta be willing, I, I would argue you got to be willing to do the job. But, you know, it, matter of fact, I was reading earlier today uh, a financial advisor that I'm aware of. He was uh, running for Congress. And he's running in a heavily Republican area and he has very little chance, but he's got one big issue that he's doing and the amount of publicity he's going to get. And and I've had friends do that in that industry that I mean, you know, so much of life is being both an authority and a celebrity. And, you know, the authority part, that means you're getting the results, you know how to deliver a great experience, whatever it is you do, you nail it. But that celebrity part's a little harder. And I mean, that's, that's a great way, Craig, of raising that awareness. And if you're passionate about something, sharing that, you, know, you always have the risk that, you know, your teeth as entrepreneurs, probably one of the most scary things is being in a bureaucracy. But uh, uh, in fact, I, I was in a board meeting uh, uh, for our homeowners association the last night. So I can say that those things are, you gotta be careful what you wish for type thing. That's right. Well, let me just share this. Uh, that's a great point you bring up. I, I'm a speaker. I'm also, I, I teach marketing, but I do love to entertain. So I share, you gotta run for office and lose, but you're right. If you win, you can still be an entrepreneur and run for that office and make a difference in this world and I'm actually thinking for running, all jokes aside, I'm thinking of running for office again because there are some issues that I do want to address. So I am actually thinking of running for office, but for the effect of where, when I speak, I try to tell a funny story, but there is a, there is a, a truth to that and there is a very big benefit of running for office. Even if you lose, you still get a lot of publicity.
I mean, and the relationships and network you build up, yes. depending on your business, can be huge. Let's go to the next segment. The book, of the, the book of the day. And you know, for your fellow entrepreneurs, Craig, what would be a book that you would recommend that they read that you found you know, great value in? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure I'm going to pick a one that I'm sure a lot of people have picked in the entrepreneur world, but it is one that changed everything. The way I looked at things and the way I perceive things was uh, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. So this goes back to work as little as possible, being a rock star. You go up on stage, and you, you do a show for two hours, and then you're done and you can do whatever you want. Of course, you got to practice and write music and everything, but the idea being you go on stage for two hours, you do a concert for 80,000 people, and then they all go home and buy your stuff because they loved your concert. So I read the Four Hour Work Week, and a lot of that stuff was in there. Work, you know, 80% of the time you work 80% of the time uh, for, to do 20% of the work, the 80-20 rule. So I'm, I'm trying to incorporate that in my life. Just be productive for 20% of the time and you can work a lot less. I have family and I have these kids, they're 15, 13, 11, that want to play golf. They're all golfers. And golf takes a long time. But I'm very busy and I'm a workaholic. So that book resonated with me big time because I, I just wanted to work less, make more, and enjoy my family. And so I've tried to apply those principles of the book, but I wouldn't say I'm great at it. Wow. Uh, I, I am a workaholic. I, I work a lot, but I do spend time with my family. I'm trying to find that balance. That's my one area of, let's call, weakness. You know, and I'm, I'm going to argue there's no balance in life, really. I, I'm yeah. always looking for harmony. <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. that. Because uh, most of us as entrepreneurs, what we do is, you know, we love, we're passionate about what we're doing. We're making a difference in the world. And what I like about uh, the four hour work week is it was one of the first books to really show how you could, you know, focus as you talked about the 80, 20 Pareto principle, really get narrowed and then outsource not only to your, you know, delegate to your employees, but outsource around the world. And uh, Tim Ferriss, I mean, he just does a great job. I mean, it's an older book, so some of the services aren't there, but you can go to his blog, and he is very articulate on this. I, I have met Tim many times. I do know him, and uh, Tim doesn't, I can tell you, he doesn't work four hours a week either. I mean, he's one of the hardest working guys I know. He, you know, work and play are sometimes mixed together along the way. But well, like, you know what? I, mean, I don't consider what I do work. I mean, that's a whole yeah. other thing that we all teach is, Look, if you love what you do, and I love speaking and I love what I do, I don't consider this work at all. But I am in my office. A I look bit. at it the same way, Craig. I, I About three years ago, I started playing golf, and I love golf. Oh, good. And I live on one of the best golf courses in the country, and uh, uh, it's one of the top 100. And, and you know, it's I'm a member, and it, there's nobody there but during the week. Point, but I'm golfing with you. Well, we're going to have to do that. But the, the point I want to make is, I could not play five times a week. I just couldn't do that. I, I do have some friends that do that. I, I want to contribute, have fun, do some of the things that we're doing here. But at the yeah. same time, you know, blend in that as well. Okay, let's go to the next segment. And the app of the day. And, you know, if you think on your smartphone, uh, what would you recommend to your fellow entrepreneurs that you have? Well, I use, I'm not a big app guy. I, I use the apps, <laughs> really funny, to, to get my mind off work. And I, uh, I'm actually really into Trivia Crush right now. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. But what I'm really focused on is Evernote. Uh, I use Evernote to organize my thoughts, to write notes. And, and, and it keeps me a little organized because I keep that phone with me all the time. And I'm always thinking of things to do and new, new uh, systems to write about and, and new ideas that I hear. I put everything on Evernote so it's in one place. I'm very organized. I write my books online on my phone. So I don't write my books. I have them transcribed. So every time I'm in the car, because that's where you think the most. When I'm in the car driving, I can think of the greatest ideas. I have it's just a basic thing on an iPhone called Voice Memos. It's basically a tape recorder on my phone. And every I, I use that like almost 24 seven. I even leave it next to my bed, which you're not supposed to leave cell phones next to your bed. But in the middle of the night, I have great ideas. I pick my cell phone up, press a button, and I tape it into the phone. And then I transcribe everything at the end of a week. And sometimes I insert it into blogs, I insert it into my book. 
but everything is there. And then my favorite is the square because that means I'm making money. Merchant account agreements are all good. And, yeah. uh, you know, exactly. and, and I mean, Evernote, I would recommend strongly some of you that are more Microsoft oriented, which I am. Uh, I think OneNote is actually a little better, but this is great debate. Having one of those is just so powerful. Uh, Rev.com I use for my voice memo, uh, which you can then, it's the same thing and uploaded transcription at a dollar a minute. And I mean, it's, Craig, this is where, I mean, you know, just having those systems, I mean, you want to make yes. it so easy along the way. But, you know, let's go to resources. And uh, Craig, you know, uh, obviously you, you, you've had a colorful life. I mean, we've got a few stories you told me that we can't share here uh, right now. Only when you're drinking with us will we share this stuff. Uh, but yeah. what happens is the, uh, you've got some resources. Let me put up your website right now. I want you to tell you know, how somebody can reach out to you, what you're doing if they want to follow up and go further. Yeah, so it's, uh, the website will be up, craigdoeswalt.com. I have rockstarmarketingbootcamps.com, and those are my, every March and September, I do a, a, a marketing bootcamp. Uh, we have 400 people that come, uh, four to 500 people every March and September in Los Angeles, and it's basically three full days of learning how to market your business. Uh, it's a lot of entertainment, a lot of fun, so it goes very, very fast because they're long 14-hour days but it goes very, very fast. And uh, I like having fun and people retain more when they're having fun. Um, I, I use uh, resources that I have. I have a list on my, on my um, website. It's tools I use. It's actually being updated all the time. But a resource that I love that I use a lot and I get a lot out of it than just what it's supposed to be because I think outside the box is prweb.com. Well, those websites where you send a press release out and then uh, you they have a template for a press release and they send it out to like 40,000 websites. I get so much traction out of that, not just because I'm seen out there by a lot of things, but I do a couple of clever things with the information that I get, that I share at my boot camps. I'm not gonna share that now because I can't give everything away. But, uh, but uh, I have uh, a lot of great things that you could use from PR web after you send the press release out as well. So basically, I put on boot camps every March and September. Then I'm doing this new thing, this personal growth weekend every January. And my first one will be uh, in January. It's always in January, every January. I mean, there's a lot. I've been taking a lot of notes. Let me go and uh, you know, kind of wrap this all together with the uh, key takeaway. And uh, this has been great, Craig. And I, I mean, I can tell you that he does have a lot more. I, I, I wrote down a bunch and I thought, well, maybe I'll bring these up because he was sharing with us. And I go, no, we don't have enough time, unfortunately. But you know, the, the very first part is this whole concept of not trying to do it alone. You know, I don't care what mastermind group, I know Craig doesn't either. You know, you, you need to be with other fellow entrepreneurs and ideally, you don't want to be the most successful guy in the room. You want to have people that have walked the talk, you know, they've, they've taken the steps before you. But I, I, I got to tell you, it's changed my life. Some of the most successful entrepreneurs I'm working with, uh, I mean, we spend over 100000 a year on this kind of lifelong learning mastermind. I'm going to encourage you to do that. Uh, you don't have to spend the 100000 but get in, involved in at least one. Second, focus, focus, focus. This is a big deal. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, many entrepreneurs, there's all kinds of studies uh, that we have ADD and we are wired differently than the regular folk. And because we're wired differently, you know, as a successful entrepreneur, you know, you, you may or may not have ever had ADD, but you certainly are more likely to be able to be distracted by, as you have that success, all these opportunities and really pick you know what it is that you're going to focus on and what difference you want to make and then you know use a filter i don't know who to credit I, i've been using it for a number of years but hell you know yes when it's really exciting it's going to have the return on investment you're going to be able to make a big difference and everything else is no and then you know the think differently um i'm in silicon valley and i think of apple and and steve jobs along the way and the, the guy uh, really thought differently. One of his top engineers that he fired three times as my next door neighbor. I've, I didn't meet Steve. I, I actually have spent some time with Steve Wozniak. So I, I grew up 
uh, even went to some of the homebrew computer clubs. Uh, so I, I saw all this weirdness going on. Uh, I didn't invest all, I should have put all my money on that, but it uh, you know, did well through that process. But my next door neighbor was explaining what it requires thinking differently. And he's, he's written up in you know, all the books on Steve being fired. He's the only guy that's been fired three times personally by Steve. So, uh, you know, you have to think differently. And the marketing tips who we got, uh, you know, going ahead and the part two with a blog, you know, write a blog, write a blog, do a video, whatever it is, do that, but leave them wanting more. And one of the best ways is part two, sending an empty envelope. I am going to take you up on that one right away, uh, Craig. And I'm not going to send it to you, but uh, yeah, I will do that. And I think that'll be fun. Run for office. I've seen it over and over again. If right situation, this can be just amazing. And you know, with that, Craig, I want I want to thank you for your insights, and I want to encourage everybody out there to you know, there's no value. You can't accelerate your success unless you execute. Go check out Craig. You know, all the recommendations, everything's at asnation.com. The transcript, the show notes, all the links. Share this with your friends, their fellow entrepreneurs. We all need help from our friends muddling through so we can make a huge difference. Your clients and your future clients, they're counting on you. Don't let them down. Wish you the best of success. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.